Hello friends, welcome to Mid-Morning Manna, coming to you from North Harrison Baptist Church, Lonnie Mattingly here. And today I want to talk to you, this week, I want to talk to you about this idea, our concept, uh, concerning moments of weakness. Sometimes, if we're not careful, we think that because we're saved, or when we get saved, from that point on, we're going to be perfect, and we're going to have all the strength in the world, we're going to do everything right. But uh, as I search the scripture, I find that every person in scripture seemed to have moments of weakness. If you go back through, you find that Adam walked with God, but in a moment of weakness, he allowed Eve to tempt him to do something that uh, she was tempted to do by, by the serpent, and uh, he plunged the world into sin by taking a bite of that forbidden fruit. And then you think about Moses. He was a great leader of God's people and in his strength, but in mo moments of weakness, Moses made all kinds of mistakes. Here he broke the Ten Commandments, threw them down, broke them a temper fit. It seemed like Moses had a problem with uh, controlling his emotions and, and that sort of thing. And then remember how he took that stick and beat that rock twice? Uh, to get the water, and uh, God told him to just strike the rock one time. He hit it twice. He was he he was upset with the with the Israelites, and on and on we could go talking about Moses. And then uh, think of Samson. He was the mighty warrior and judge of Israel. In a moment of weakness, he gave the secret to his strength away to Delilah. She told the enemy, and of course you know the rest of the story with Samson and Delilah and and his hair and and all that sort of thing. And then there was Jonah. He was the mighty preacher, but when God told him to go to Nineveh and preach, all of a sudden he took off and tried to run and hide, and you know what happened next? He was swallowed by the well and all that sort of thing. But it was a moment of weakness that threw him into that situation. And then there, there was Peter who cut off the Roman soldier's ear to defend Jesus in the garden, but then at the crucifixion, he was over here with the with the enemies of Christ, uh, cursing and, and swearing and denying that he even knew him. And uh, then the apostle Paul said, the things I would, I do not. And the things I would not, that I do. Paul said, I have moments of weakness too. So it's all through the scripture, how that even the godliest people that we know about had moments of weakness. And I, I want you to think about this. Number one, it's a universal problem. It's a universal problem. Don't beat yourself up so bad. Instead, try to improve. F find out what caused you to go off, what caused you to compromise, what caused you to commit that sin. And uh, just ask God then to strengthen you. I don't Get counseling if you need it, whatever you need to do. If, if you have a bad attitude, if you're a gossip, if you, you know, here we're in the day now, uh, you can put things out for the whole world to see through the internet and uh, through Facebook and, and Twitter and, and YouTube and all those kind of things. And uh, you can, you can put things down that would hurt people. And, uh, and yet uh, just in a moment of weakness, you send something out and then maybe even years later or months later, or maybe even the very next day, you regret it. You think, wow, what have I done? I wish I hadn't done that. And and that, that sort of thing. We have those moments of weakness. Again, it's a uni universal problem. Listen to what the Word of God says in, uh, in Ecclesiastes chapter 7, uh, verse 20. And he said, For there is not a just man on earth that doeth good and sinneth not. Think of that. Not a just man on earth. And then I think of 1 John chapter 1, verse 8. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. I think John was talking, uh, when he was writing that, I think he was writing to Christian people. He wasn't trying to prove the old sin nature that we all need to be saved from. I think he was talking to people that were already saved, but he was telling them that if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Even spiritual people have moments of weakness. Sunday school teachers, Christian workers, even pastors and preachers have moments of weakness. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, the Bible says this. I, I, this is a great verse. Listen to it. As a matter of fact, jot this down. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. Work on it this week. Memorize it. Use it as a stronghold in your life to help you to stop and think and make wise decisions in those moments of weakness. He said, there hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. 
But God is faithful, who will not suffer us to be tempted above that you will, you, will not suffer you to be tempted above that you're able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. Think of that. God said nobody's above temptation, but if you really want to escape that temptation, instead of, instead of bowing to the temptation, doing what it's luring you to do, instead of that, why not instead determine that you're going to stand for Christ and ask God to deliver you and he'll be faithful. He's faithful and just to deliver you, to help you, to strengthen you in those moments of weakness. Now, I don't know what it is. Maybe you have often moments. Maybe uh, maybe it's some old sin habit from before you got saved. Maybe you were addicted to tobacco or to alcohol or to drugs or to immorality or something else. And God wants to give you victory. Well, we're, gonna, we're done for the day. Let's pray and we'll be on our way. Have a beautiful song to go off with. But we're going to continue with this moments of weakness idea. Every Christian needs to hear this. Share it with your friends. Share it with your loved ones. And of course, the unsaved need to hear it too. But those of us who are Christians, those of us who want to be an example, we need to make sure that we understand that those moments of weakness are a reality and we need to be prepared for them, have our guard up and tr ask God to help us do right and to have victory over those moments. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the love of Christ. Thank you for, for, for all the blessings you give us. Thank you, Lord, that you said there's no temptation taken us, but such as is common to man, God is faithful who will help us through those times. God, forgive us for our weaknesses. Forgive us for the times we failed. But Lord, give us strength to have more and more victories. And we give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. There are things as we travel this earth-shifting sand that transcend all the reason of man. But the things that matter the most in this world, they can never life with its great mysteries surely someday will come to an end but faith will conquer the darkness and death and will lead me at last to my friend slain on the cross has the power to change lives today for he changed me completely a new life is mine that is why by the cross I will stay Surrender and earth is no more. I'll
Still cling to the old.